Okay, and we're back. Somewhere out there, somebody else who has access to the repository has made some changes. I've been busy getting a paper ready for a conference. I don't know what the changes are or who's made them. Maybe if I'm lucky, whoever it is, remember to mail me and warn me, but I don't need that. Again, I am in my working copy, and I can say subversion update. And it says there's been an update to count.shell. Somebody else has made a change. And now I've got a new version of count.shell. Hmm, SVN log count.shell. Somebody, GVW, made a change, and this is the message, the comment that they typed in, showing date as well as file name and output. You can see my changes, ordering output per file by decreasing frequency and importing files created in this morning's tutorial. This is why you have the comments. SDN log will show you when changes were made, by whom, at what time, and the comments. Comments like fixed stuff or added feature are useless because if you've got a hundred changes to a paper or a project and you're trying to find when did we decide to normalize by temperature instead of normalizing by humidity, if all of the comments say fixed stuff, yeah, you can't find out when the change was made, who made it, or exactly what was changed. A meaningful comment on the history is as important and as useful as a meaningful comment in the code. So, now I can say SVN diff against revision 2 count.shell. Show me in detail what's different between what I've currently got, that's revision 3, and what there was in revision 2 in the file count.shell. And again it shows me that there's been one change, see the plus sign? What's happened is the date command has been added. So now when I run bash count.shell you can see it's printing the date and then the file name and then the data. Now I don't think that's a particularly useful change, but before I take it out I should go back and talk to the author who was GVW and say, okay, why did you make this change? I don't understand it. That doesn't mean it's wrong. Maybe they're using the program in a slightly different way. Clearly they thought this was important. I don't see much point in printing out Thursday 30 August 2012, 1432 seconds, 14 o'clock and 32 seconds, 14 o'clock and 32 seconds, four times. I don't see the value of that. That doesn't mean I get to erase it. But in this case, I'm just going to be evil and go through and get rid of it. Sorry, I need to actually save my changes. SVN diff count.shell. Okay, SVN commit. Uh, don't need to repeat. Ah! I know why they did this. Let's SVN revert my changes. Nano count.shell. I bet what they wanted to do was put the date up at the top. I bet what they wanted to do was have a record in the output of when the output was created. They don't need it for every single file because that's just going to repeat the same day and probably the same hour and minute over and over again. They probably wanted it once at the top to say this is when the output was created. So let's make that change, test it. Okay, first line is the date, and after that we get file name, output, file name, output, and so forth. Moving date command to top of script so that it appears once. Okay, now when my colleague does an update, she will get that fix along with a comment explaining why I thought I made it or why I thought it should be made. I know why I made it. This is why I thought it should be. You know what I mean. This is not decaf. So, this is the work cycle. This is the common work cycle. I do my work, I commit my changes. Somebody else does their work, they commit their changes. When I come back to do more work, I update first. If 
I'm curious about things, I can look in the log, I can look in their messages, I can use SVN diff to see exactly what they changed in the code, in the paper, in the data, in whatever. And then I can carry on with my work. But there's one more important case. Suppose that I edit this file and I say that we're just going to sort in numerical order, but not reverse. So it'll be least to greatest. For some reason, I'm doing a graph and I want a nice rising curve instead of a dropping curve. I'm going to output count and species in ascending order. Okay, So I've done that. But while I've been doing this, my colleague has been making different changes to the same file. Hang on a second and we'll see what happens. Okay, my colleague has just finished her typing. SVN diff count.shell. That's the difference between what I've got and my starting point, not what I've got and the master. Don't know anything about that yet. So SVN commit sorting in ascending numerical order count.shell. Boom. This is what version control is really for. The commit failed because the count.shell that I started with is now out of date. We had this version. Somebody else made changes and committed a new version. I'm now trying to make different changes and commit, but I can't do that because my starting point is out of date compared to what's in the master. I have to pull these changes down, merge, and then commit. So, SVN update count.shell. Conflict discovered. All right, version control is doing its job. My changes and the other person's changes are bumping into each other. So my options are postpone this and deal with it later. That's almost always the right thing. Show the diff. Edit immediately. Bad idea. Don't try to do this too quickly. Keep mine wherever they conflict, basically throw away the other person's changes, or keep theirs wherever they conflict, throw away my changes, or show all options again, which is a really dumb choice given that there's only two lines of them, but there we go. I'm going to postpone dealing with this. So you can now see a capital C. There's a conflict in count.shell. If I do SVN status, there's a conflict in count.shell and the version control system has created three temporary files. Here's what was in mine, here's the common starting point, and here is what's currently in the master. We both started with revision 4, the current master is revision 5, and here's mine. What you probably want to do though is go directly into the file and you can see how it's been modified. My stuff is now marked with less than, less than, less than, less than, dot mine. And here's what is in my file. Then there's all the greater than, greater thans. Right. Sorry, an equal sign is a separator. And then there's what's in revision 5, which is the current master. Okay, that's useful. It looks like somebody changed the file name. Okay, here's what I'm going to do to reconcile it. I will mostly keep theirs, I think. So I will just get rid of my stuff, and now it's for f in data slash star dot text, echo dollar f. So they're using a single letter for a variable name instead of the word file name. Hmm. No, I don't like that. Let's reconcile like that. See, I can do anything I want in the file as long as I get rid of those conflict markers, the less thans, the equals, and the greater thans that demarcated different regions. Now, there are a lot of tools that will read something with those markers and actually give you a two-pane or even a three-pane display of the file so that you can see yours, theirs, and the merge, or you can drag changes back and forth. But for simple things, you can just use a plain old text editor. So I save this, I exit, I test it. Okay, I believe this is working. And now I say subversion, I have resolved the problem in count.shell. Okay. I explicitly tell version control that whatever is now in the file is what I want and that any conflicts between different versions have now been fixed. And now I can say subversion commit resolved conflict K 
keeping single letter variable name. And now it will let me push those changes, and now I've got revision 6. I can't push until I've done the resolve. I can't do the resolve until I've actually downloaded from the master. So the version control is forcing me to pay attention to other people's work. It cannot force me to do something sensible when I'm actually editing the file. How would it know? But at least now we can do subversion, blame, count.shell, and it shows me line by line who was the last user to edit that line and what revision was the change made in. As you can see, almost all of this file has been written by the user Mozilla, some in version 1, some in version 6, uh, one in version 4. One line was written by GVW in revision 5. So I can go through and line by line see who changed what, who added what. I can then go back and again use commands like subversion log and subversion info to find out more about how we got here. And this can be tremendously valuable. If you're looking at a piece of code and you don't know what it's doing or why it's there, you can find out who the author was and ask them. And that can save you a lot of can save you a lot of wasted hours trying to reverse engineer what they've done and a lot of grief if you get it wrong, if you misunderstand their reasons or the special case that this code exists to handle.